I name this ship Britannia. I wish success to her and to all who sail in her. Her Majesty releases the traditional bottle, not of champagne this time, but of Empire wine. Soon the Britannia will become a home for the Queen, the Duke and their children. After 44 years of service, carrying officials and the royal family more than a million miles, that the Royal Yacht Britannia finally came to rest in the port of Leith in Edinburgh, where it's displayed in all its splendour to over 300,000 visitors each year. It was soon after the, its last duty to carry Chris Patton and the Prince of Wales home from Hong Kong in July 1997, but Tony Blair, facing criticism for the £11 million operating cost, declared that the vessel should be decommissioned. The Queen was devastated and was moved to tears at the farewell ceremony in December of that year. Originally designed to be a hospital ship in times of war and a royal yacht in times of peace, it certainly justified its £2 million construction costs. Although it never served as a hospital ship, it soon became the most recognised vessel in the world. Designed to operate in the tropics and the Arctic waters, this 412 foot long vessel weighed in at more than 5,500 tonnes. It could cruise for more than 2,000 miles at 20 knots before needing to refuel. At the time of its construction, it contained many groundbreaking inventions, including an automated watertight door system which would activate automatically in the event of the hull being penetrated. There was a state-of-the-art stabilisation equipment to ensure that the hospital patients and the royal family had a smooth ride. Even the engines were finely tuned to ensure that the minimum of noise and vibration throughout the ship. Even the design of the bridge was such as to ensure that there were no updrafts when the Queen was making her appearance. Once the vessel entered service as a naval hospital ship, it was very soon seen as being a royal family's yacht, which toured the world promoting British industry and Commonwealth solidarity. The accommodation on Britannia is divided into three specific areas. These are the formal entertainment area, the royal family's accommodation and the crew's quarters. The royal family's suite is positioned towards the rear of the vessel to offer luxuriously appointed bedrooms and a living area requiring minimal interface with the crew. All of the windows are above the height of any crew member who might be walking by. The overriding requirement on board was peace and tranquility. This gave rise to some interesting modifications to the normal naval operating procedures. Most significantly, that many orders were given using hand signals rather than shouting. Towards the rear of the ship is the lounge, containing all the elements required to provide the royal family with a happy and relaxed atmosphere, spilling out onto the rear deck, ideal for sunbathing and relaxing in absolute privacy. When walking through this special area, it's easy to understand why the Queen should become so emotionally attached to what was her floating palace. Rising from the Royal Suite is a spectacular staircase to the entrance of the formal entertaining area and dining facility. The room is capable of entertaining over 200 guests for cocktails and up to 50 for a full-on banquet. The staircase was ideally positioned to allow the Queen and the Royal Family to enter and exit at the given times. Forward of this area is the bridge, where the presiding Admiral or Captain had his comfortable accommodation. You can see that it's only steps away from the bridge 
should his presence be required in an emergency. Interestingly, like Nelson, his bedroom contains one of the only two baths on the ship. As a ship of war, the main bridge is located on a lower deck to make it less vulnerable in times of attack, with instructions from the captain or the admiral being given down brass tubes from the flying bridge above. To starboard. Midships. Midships. Revolutions 100. The royal family made its mark by bringing various components of previous royal yachts to Britannia. The main wheel having come from the racing yacht Britannia built in 1893 for King Edward VII. There are also many other artefacts representing generations of the royal family's involvement with the sea dotted around the ship. On the lower decks, the officer's mess provides a comfortable haven after a long day at sea. There's a separate dining facility served from a tiny kitchen. Both the bar and the dining room bristle with priceless artefacts, including a framed button from Lord Nelson's coat. Even lower down in the bowels of the ship are the quarters for the general crew. As with all naval vessels, these are cramped and designed solely for the purpose of eating and sleeping. In its early days, the crew of Britannia slept in hammocks slung across the corridor leading to the laundry. These were replaced in the early 60s with bunk beds and lockers. Having walked through the Royal Yacht and seen the past services it has provided to our country, one cannot but feel a replacement would no doubt generate many hundreds of times its cost in contracts for British companies. But more importantly, it would rekindle the spirit of warmth and friendship so sadly lacking in today's society. I, for one, hope a replacement comes soon. Only time will tell. <laughs>